Hello, thank you for clicking on today's video. Today we're gonna to be talking about something called the T distribution. Now, when we use the T distribution, we right now are going to be using it for one population mean, creating a confidence interval for that specific parameter. When we use the Z distribution, we use that for a confidence interval for one population proportion, or P. Now, they're very similar in that they do the same thing. They give us some confidence level multiplier to create those confidence intervals. And they actually do have a lot of similarities, but they also have some differences. So today we're gonna to be talking about the similarities and the differences, and then I'll be showing you a table that will be used for that T distribution. Now, here are four different uh, curves that are representing these different distributions. And the first thing that you'll notice right here in panel A, this is the Z distribution. So let's talk about the shape. It is symmetric. That means that the right and left side are equal. It is unimodal, which means it has one prominent peak and it's centered at zero. Now these other panels, panel B and panel C are T distributions, and you will notice the same thing. They are symmetric, they are unimodal, and centered at zero. Here, symmetric, unimodal, and centered at zero. Now the other thing that you might notice, which is kind of new, is that there's one Z distribution, but these T distributions are different depending on this measurement called degrees of freedom. So this is the first difference that we have. The Z distribution, there's only one, and there's an infinite number of T distributions, all of which depend on this measurement called degrees of freedom. Now, degrees of freedom is actually a very theoretical measurement, so we're not gonna get into that. I'm just gonna show you what that measurement is and what it, um, how you calculate that. So, degrees of freedom is often just shorthanded to df, and it's the simplest com calculation you'll have in statistics. n minus 1. Remember that n is sample size. So very closely related to degrees of freedom is how sample size is changing. So if the sample size goes up, degrees of freedom goes up. If sample size goes down, uh, degrees of freedom would be smaller. So they're directly related to one another. So that's one of the main differences. Now the other differences, and we'll focus on here, panel D, where A, B, and C are all layered on top of each other, you will notice that they are all centered at zero, but you can see in the tails that the T distribution has more probability in the tails. So compared to the Z distribution that has less probability in the tails, the T distribution, because it's further away from this a horizontal line, is showing you that there's more area, which remember equates to more probability in the tails. Now the other thing that you will notice, that was panel B, so the two degrees of freedom, which means the sample size is only three. When you increase the sample size, or in other words, when you increase degrees of freedom, you'll notice that panel C, which is layered on top here, is beginning to look more and more like the Z distribution, which is true. So the larger the sample size, or the larger the degrees of freedom, the closer it will be to the actual Z distribution. So let's write out those similarities and differences. So when you compare the two, remember we said that they are both, dis, both distributions are symmetric and centered around zero. Both distributions are bell-shaped. However, there's only one Z distribution and an infinite number of T distributions. The height of the T distribution depends on degrees of freedom, where degrees of freedom, remember, is measuring N or the sample size minus one. The T distribution has more probability in the tail, which we saw. And the Z distribution, because it, there's only one, it also follows the empirical rule. And as the T distribution increases the degrees of freedom, the closer it will be to following that empirical rule as well. So as the degrees of freedom get larger, the T distribution also begins to look more and more like that Z distribution. Now one challenge with all of this we go back is that with, let me erase this so you can see it better, with the T distribution changing depending on the degrees of freedom, that means that you will need to use a table to look up 
what the multiplier is depending on how confident you want to be and what the degrees of freedom are. So when you use these tables on the left hand side is going to be your degrees of freedom and at the top of the table you will have the confidence level and then you want the intersection between those values to be able to figure out what your confidence level multiplier is. And in future videos, when we do an actual example, I will show you how to find that in real time. See you there.